one, you're on. Just a minute. Oh, shoot. Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I'm so glad you're here. I am a proud um, integrative nutrition health coach with lifestyle medicine. And every month, second Tuesday of the month, I do a cooking class to help our patients and guests um, navigate a whole food plant-based diet. Not everybody is fully plant-based. I am, I have been going on three years now. A number of our patients are, and we believe that it's the healthiest way to eat on the planet. And so the recipes I'm gonna share with you today are all completely plant-based. And because I believe that our lifestyle will dictate how long we live, how well we live, regardless of our genes. I call this recipes for longevity because these foods are all whole foods and um, will nourish you beautifully. So we're gonna get started because we have a lot to do tonight. I hope that you're comfortable. I wish I could feed you personally. There was a time we had class in a room that um, people were able to taste samples, but this is better because some of you are out of the state and you're still able to watch this. So follow me over to my sink and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. The recipes tonight include what I call almost free soup. The reason I call it that is because I keep all my vegetable scraps there are some things that you wouldn't want to add, and maybe you can Google that, but in a short list, I'm going to say the skins of eggplant, the um, shell and stem of artichoke, which can be really bitter, the papery skins of onions and garlic, bitter. Um, oh, let's see. But just about everything else, for example, the bottom of the stems of asparagus are great, and all those parts of vegetables that you cut off the end. I don't use massive amounts of things that are from the cabbage family, the cruciferous. For example, I'll use some of the, the stems and leaves of maybe one head of cauliflower, but if I, if I have multiple, I won't put too many, too many stems of kale, for example, or broccoli, because what I'll end up with is a soup that's a little cabbagey. And, or not a soup, but well, a soup ultimately, but also a, um, a broth. I keep the a one gallon bag in the freezer, keep putting the scraps in. When I peel carrots, the scraps go in the bottom of celery, the leaves of celery. I use some of those, but a lot of that I'll put in there. And some of those very small stems, um, the, the really yellow ones, a lot of people like that, but that I throw into my soup. And then, and you can look if, I've, I've recorded a number of videos to help you with some of these more, um, uh, the basic uh, cooking skills. For example, how to make the broth. You can go to my website, nansimmonson.com, and I'll show you how I make broth from scraps. And this is the broth I'm using. So why is the soup almost free? Because the scraps were free. That would have gone into my compost pile at one time. Now it goes into my soup. So I'm going to be using vegetable broth. And then you can get another recipe online by savory garbanzo beans, where I, instead of buying a lot of canned garbanzo beans, I cook my garbanzo beans in the Instapot, and I am um, draining off the broth for that because the garbanzo beans I lay out cool and then put in one quart baggies and freeze them. Um, they're perfect that way. They break apart and you can put them in any kind of a recipe. But the broth I keep, it's so delicious, especially if you use my recipe uh, the way I season it. and. When I freeze things like that, I just use these Ziploc containers. They hold five cups, but you don't fill them to five cups because uh, 
water broth expands and you'll pop the cover. So you're getting about four and a half cups of it, about a quart. And so I'm gonna use this tonight as well. Again, free, I could have thrown that away. A lot of people do. I'm going to get my um, soup started. So this is called, and, and you would have gotten a invitation. You would have clicked the link to get on. And if you went further down the email for that invitation, you would see the recipes. If you print them, it's a couple of sheets. The first one is Nan's Almost Free Soup. All right. So I'm starting with a big onion that I've chopped. In most recipes, if you look at most recipes, there was a a um, step there that I didn't take because I don't. In other words, most recipes would have said, put a tablespoon or two or three of oil in there. I don't see a need for that, not only because I don't add oil to my food, because I don't find it necessary. It's a processed food, and all the vegetable oils are high in, well, all but maybe um, olive oil, which only has a heat point or a smoke point of 375. That means on almost all sauteing and certainly any frying, you hit the smoke point and it changes the molecular structure of the olive oil and it degrades it. So olive oil is not a great saute medium anyway, and yet everybody does that. In any case, what's happening here is that these onions are browning lightly. They're caramelizing because onion has a lot of um, moisture in it. And I'm going to add a little of my broth. And this is how I, what I call dry saute. If you see any of my recipes, everything starts with basically a dry saute. All right. I'm going to do that one more time. One thing. I added to this recipe, and you may make a note to yourself, and it's not necessary, but I love to use allium vegetables. They're very healthy for you. What are alliums? That's the genus. And alliums are onion-based kind of vegetables. So onion, shallot, scallions, leeks, chives, um, is there another one? Garlic. And they have... A, they have phytonutrients that are great for us. Some are made more available when it's cooked. Some is better when it's raw. So what I do is on almost everything that we serve, like a chili, a black bean chili, I just posted a great recipe for that online. Um, there's onions in the chili, but then we scatter some chopped green onions on top so we have raw and cooked. Well, I'm going on and on because... I realized I don't have, I didn't write in this step, garlic into the recipe. And yes, I add garlic to almost everything, but I don't add it when I start with the onion because garlic will burn. It doesn't have the moisture that onion does. Now I'm going to do one more time a little bit of broth. What happens is it deglazes the pan. It bubbles up. It pulls up a little bit of brown. We're not talking burn, we're talking brown. And then it goes back down again. And that in, that encourages a rather quick caramelization. It's called deglazing the pan. You do that all the time with things that you're browning and then you add a little bit of broth, sometimes wine, and it bubbles up and deglazes. Okay, so. Now, do you see the difference in color here? This is much more richly flavored than it would have been if I had just begun by starting with the onion. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't have the richness of flavor that I really like. So I also, have, and if you're looking at the recipe, I'm following the recipe to a degree, mainly. I noted in the recipe that the carrot and the celery were cut in bite-sized chunks. I think it looks so pretty in a soup to have chunks of vegetable, chunks of potato, chunks of carrot. I keep looking at the monitor. I've got to remember to look at you. <laughs> so I've got chunks of carrot and celery 
that I'm stirring in with the um, onion just to blend it. Not necessary, but I'm going to do that. And get it all heated. And then I'm going to add a potato. Now, the potato I've had in water because um, I chopped it quite a while ago. And that's one thing that you may want to do. There's something called mise en place. It's a French word for uh, everything in place. Before you start to cook, it's so handy to have everything out like this. And in order to do that with a potato and have it not brown, put it in water. Sorry, I'm going to leave you for a minute. And there, dump the water, put my potatoes in. But again, nice chunky potatoes. Mix the whole thing up. So this is my soup base. I could have, and you could, if you want, put everything, the more delicate vegetables in. Oh, I'm going to add the squash as well. And I'll say something more about the squash in a minute. But I'm going to add it, and then I'll talk to you. So, well, okay, back up, man. I want to say it first. I could have bought the squash. This is a three pound butternut squash. Wanted to show it to you in case you're relatively new in the kitchen and you haven't done this before. I wouldn't blame you because cutting through this thing is kind of challenging. You can put the whole thing in the microwave oven for two to three minutes, depending on the size. It softens it and then it's easier to peel and it's certainly easier to get the knife in, cut it in half because you've got to get the um, seeds out of there. You would cut it in half, you would peel it, cut it in half, remove the seeds, and then chunk it. Well, you may be hearing all of that and say, yeah, you can. I'm not going to. So, Trader Joe's for a couple of dollars. This was three dollars. It was a dollar a pound. And Trader Joe's for about three dollars, not for three pounds. This probably will dress out to about two and a half pounds. But for 12 ounces, I get chunked butternut squash. So today, we're getting chunked butternut squash. But I wanted to I'll just have a chance to explain all that to you. So I could have now put the more tender vegetables in. But then the vegetable soup, when we eat it tonight, uh, if we were, and actually all soup is better if you let it sit and eat it the next day, soup, stews, chilies. They're just better when their flavors marry, but we're not marrying anything tonight. I've got my daughter here and she's going to have dinner with us. Well, my husband's already eating, but she and I will have a nice big pot of soup or bowl of soup. I'm adding now eight cups of broth. And so I'm going to use four cups of my vegetable broth. And I have, I call it my library of these containers in the freezer because I love going out there and picking what I need for that meal or maybe the next meal when I'm low on broth and my freezer bag isn't full or I don't have time to make broth, then I just pull out the broth just like I did with this. I made these garbanzo beans, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago. And because I made a lot, I didn't have any more broth but I certainly saved what I had. So now I have this, what would fix? When you um, have the broth from garbanzo beans, it's generally known as aquafaba, even though, oh, see I'm just showing you, I, when I buy my labels, I order them on Amazon and I put easy peel labels because if I didn't say that, because I have done it where I didn't say that, and I got a whole roll of labels that left white, sticky, ugly on my containers. And this thing pulled right off, which I prefer. And it's just handy. Don't ever think that you're going to remember what's in a container. Because when it's frosty and red, it could be spaghetti sauce. It could be chili. It could be, oh gosh, a tomato um, a tomato sauce that you just had to package because you didn't need everything you bought in a big jar. So label everything, put the date on it. I have lots of broths in my refrigerator. I always go for the oldest first. That only makes sense where you're going to find a broth from 2017. So I'm putting this up to a simmer. And when it 
um, begins to simmer, I'll turn it down. I'm going to cook it for about 20 minutes because I want these vegetables nearly tender but not totally tender because then I'm going to add the more delicate vegetables. And we'll talk about that when I do. Oh, let me mention the potatoes because part of this you might think, wait a minute, that's not free. Well, this is almost free. We were at, this is certified organic, and I was so amazed by the price. I couldn't even think of what I was going to do with these, but I bought it anyway because a five-pound bag, if this isn't five pounds, part of it's in here, part of it is going to my daughter, part of it is going into a mushroom, no, no, a cauliflower, um, cauliflower, potato, uh, mashed potato, uh, that tastes just as good as mashed potatoes with half the bulk and calories and it's delicious that's on the website as well and um, and then sauteed mushrooms go over the top of it we have this marvelous meal and it not only costs next to nothing but it's decadent because you feel like you're having almost a cheaters meal and yet it's very lean so five pounds of potatoes a dollar fifty nine that is crazy I'm not great at math, but I think that's about 30 cents a pound. That's just crazy. Most of the time, potatoes are a dollar a pound or you know, even more than that, depending on what you get. So we're bringing this up to a simmer. Um, oh, one more thing. I wanted to add to it now. I'll add the other things later. And that is a can of, um, of diced tomatoes. And in this case, it's a salt-free they're salt free. I'm going to, I hate to waste anything. So I'm going to shake this up and get all that really good stuff in there because I don't have a spatula nearby. Okay. There. I like a little tomato in my brothy soups. You may want more tomato. You may not want tomato at all. And that's the fun of this. You do anything you want with this soup. And you'll see in the recipe there are other recommendations for what you could have put in. It could have been kombucha squash. Uh, it could have been pumpkin rather than acorn. Let's see if we're lined up. Yeah, I think we're fine. All right. Uh, there we go. Okay. And actually, I'm going to lower you just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Ah, I have no head. <laughs> All right, I think we're fine. There, okay. Uh, a little bit more. That's the problem with moving it, but it's just easier to use my stove rather than put a heating uh, element here. Um, gives me more room and the stove is easier to adjust. So the next thing I want to get started, and I'm going to start the heat. is my the um, muffins the corn muffins whole grain corn muffins how are they whole grain because for example this is uh, rolled oats i always get organic oats because oats as with a lot of grains are sprayed with a desiccant before they are harvested so that the heads will dry and not turn um and not get moldy uh and they use like roundup as the desiccant and I don't want that in my gut and you don't want it in your gut so consider organic oats when you can if that isn't possible if the expense is too high get the oats anyway uh, because whole grains are excellent for us legumes are excellent vegetables are excellent so we're going to do a muffin that is oats that I ground, didn't grind them. Sounds like I had some kind of a stone in a wheel uh, and the oxen walking round and round. Sorry, I got carried away. I just used my Vitamix, put the oats in the Vitamix and I add ground oats. And then somebody did something similar with corn. And this is cornmeal. And I mixed a coarse and a finer cornmeal. If it's too coarse, like a polenta, the muffins are a little bit too grainy. If it's too fine, 
I think they lack character. So I've got to get something done right away. I wanted to remind myself of, and that is that if you look at your recipe and without the recipe, it's just fine. You can use flaxseed as an egg substitute. A tablespoon of flaxseed into three cups of water, liquid, broth, milk, um, becomes a bit of a gel. Well, we're using a full cup of almond milk and I'm going to pour a tablespoon and a half of flaxseed in it because it's going to gel. It just doesn't become as obvious a gel as it would if I had three tablespoons and then the tablespoon of flax um, because of the volume of moisture. So I want to let this sit at least five minutes because uh, I want the, the ground flax, not whole seed flax. They're almost impervious. And that's one of the reasons that it, if you are whole food plant-based, and you are protecting and maintaining your omega-3 levels, you can do that with your leafy greens. You also do that with seeds and nuts. All, um, uh, walnuts are the highest in omega-3s of the nuts, while flaxseed is the highest in omega-3s of the seeds. But you have to grind those flax seeds, otherwise they go in and boop, they go right out because they're slick little things. So you've got to have your flax seeds ground. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to mix a half a cup of uh, applesauce. I like to eat my food whole. I would much rather eat an apple than eat applesauce. However, for this recipe and for several other recipes that I have, the um, the moisture and even some of the sweetness in the recipe is from applesauce. So I do keep applesauce around. I'll show you how I do it where I'm not wasting it. I took a half a cup out of this jar. What am I going to do with the jar? I'm not going to eat it otherwise. And this is lovely. It's a organic honey crisp applesauce. Trader Joe's has a jar this big for only $2.50. This one was for $4, but I happened to be where I... I wasn't, anyway, I, it was convenient for me to get it. And this is something you can get online. I heard about them from um, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook, and I recommend her site for fabulous uh, training videos on everything, how to go whole food plant-based, how to do um, batch cooking, how to make chopped salads. I got my start on chalk salads, which I have every day from Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook. And she talked about these and I thought, mm, that sounds pretty good. I bought them and I love them. So this is silicone and there are several sizes. This one has gradations of a quarter cup and a half a cup. And I have one that has gradations of a half a cup and um, to a cup and then I have the two to four cup ones and I'm going to simply pour my um, applesauce in here to a half a cup uh, there it is and then just sort of straighten it up and I'll do it until it's empty but now just love this there and I'm going to grab a spoon because one of them is a little under and one of them is a little over. Just turned out well. Okay. Put the cover on. Put this in the freezer. Oh, let me show you. I can't turn it because it'll go all over. And um, put the cover on. It'll be frozen by tomorrow. And then if you've ever worked with silicone, it stays um, pliable even when frozen, I'll push from the bottom. And when I come back, I'll show you what I'll end up with. I did this, oh, I already have unsweetened applesauce, but I wanted to show you that anyway. But you see that? That neat little brick of applesauce in this one quart baggie 
and I'll just line those up in there. You can get four in there. Allow me to simply defrost that, and I have a half a cup of, of applesauce for whatever I'm making. So it's they're handy, and they are called. Sorry, they're disappearing again. Super cubes. Um, I found them on Amazon, and they have all the different sizes. And you don't need a lot of any one of them. I thought I did, so I bought two of everything. I've not done it that way. I've just filled them and then taken them out, and there they were available for the next use. Okay, so there, that's gelled up. So I'm putting in the bowl um, the applesauce and the um, almond milk with the flat seed that has now become somewhat viscous the way it does and I'm adding to that a half a cup of date paste you know what I have to admit to you I blew it because I forgot about that so date paste same thing I make date paste by the pound. Pound of dates, pour boiling water over, they soften, I drain it, put them in the blender or the food processor and put one cup of that drained water back in it and whir it up. And then this is what I end up with. This lovely paste that is from whole fruit. So when I say to you there's no sugar in here and there's no fake sweetener, there's no maple syrup, there's no honey, that's not fake, but that's still a refined product. This is nothing but ground dates and water. And I don't know if you saw that it was kind of square. I had one of the one half cup cubes because I make the, the, um, the, the batch of it and then I put it in the super cubes and do exactly what I just showed you. So. I have date paste all the time because I have several of these in the freezer. And it calls for a half a cup of maple syrup or date paste. Well, I prefer to use date paste. It's whole fruit. There you go. I'll defrost another one tomorrow. And there. All right, now I have, I've used a half a cup of date paste, half a cup of applesauce, unsweetened almond milk, and now I'm going to add to that in this bowl, I'm mixing it up well, can you see? Mm, it already smells wonderful. I'm adding to that now the flowers, but I don't want to add the flowers until I've combined them. So I'm combining the oat flour, the corn flour, cornmeal. I'm adding a teaspoon of baking soda, baking powder, a little bit of salt, and with a whisk, I'm going to blend those. That way, I'm not expecting that when I throw it all in, somehow it'll be well blended with the liquid because we don't want to mix the liquid to that degree with the, the flour. We want to just stir this enough to moisten it. And at the end, just before I pour them in, I'm going to add a cup of corn. Doesn't that sound fun? Oh, let me take a look at this. Excuse me for a second. Okay, we're on simmer letting it cook and we'll get back to that as soon as I put the muffins in and put the other vegetables in I believe it may be soft enough or maybe I'll get one more recipe and then do that all right so and I can see that it's mixed because the white streaks of oat are not they were as before I started mixing them in with the yellow streaks of cornmeal okay. and I'm just using a paddle or a spoon or a spatula to um, mix these I'm not using a whisk 
because I don't want them to be beaten. And so I have my dry ingredients with my whip. And can you see? Sure. Mm, it's a great blend. It gets a little bit, and you'll see this when you start to blend it. We've got some acid in the applesauce, which makes that starts activating the um, baking soda and baking powder, but especially baking soda. And so it's getting kind of, um, kind of, it's almost like there was a yeast in here that's starting to ferment. It's very cool, very light, very airy, and that's why we don't want to beat the air out of it. And now I'm adding one cup of, this was frozen corn that I defrosted. We don't want to put it in corn or frozen. And I'm going to mix it in. Now, if you want something even more interesting and it happens to be your taste, I could see a maybe half of a jalapeno pepper, uh, very finely diced and put in here. The little bits of green would be pretty and serve it with a chili. Uh, I have my black bean and mushroom chili. It's actually one of Chef AJ's recipes on my site. And that's what I made this with initially and loved it so much. I thought, okay, this is going to go with my almost free soup. Okay, that's it for the mixing. Now, I have a silicone um, uh, muffin pan. Instead of one that I have to oil, I'm going to use the silicone. You've got to still cool the muffins somewhat or they break apart. Um, some people even put a light smear of oil in the silicone pan, um, but I'm not going to. Let me get it where you can see it. There we go. And big scoop. And we're making 12 muffins here. Big scoop. This is just a big serving spoon. It's a little bit more handy than some I have because... The serving spoon has a bit of a point on it. And for me to be able to do this right-handed is kind of amazing because my right hand doesn't work that well. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm left-handed, and I seldom use my right hand. And therefore, it doesn't work well. Usually, I'm very uncoordinated in it. My mother was left-handed. But she went to school at a time where they were told she went to school in a convent and they were told you could not use your left hand. And so they would not allow students who were left-handed to be left-handed. So she had the benefit of being ambidextrous. She could use both of her hands perfectly well. She could write with her right hand, because that's what she was required to do, but she could use her left hand for a lot of other things. I'm just chattering. All right, so is this a healthy meal, or is this a healthy um, uh, bread? Yes, it is. You have whole oats, you have almost whole corn, you have no refined sugar, you have some dates in there that are actually being shared by 12 muffins, a little bit of leavening, some corn from ex some extra protein. You know, corn is a great source of protein and some extra fiber, a wonderful source of fiber. And they are delicious. All right. We're gonna cook them for 20 minutes. And you'll see what they look like when they're finished. They freeze well. If you store them for a while, keep them in the refrigerator and they'll last longer. And then you can freeze them as well. Okay. I don't want to miss one bit. There we go. And then tap. It's not as easy to pick up the uh, silicone, that is for sure, as it is with a metal. But just tap it 
to get them to go even. And then I have a, I have my traditional oven, but I also got something called the Breville Smart Air Oven that does a number of things, including uh, air frying. And I love it for that, but I also like the idea that I can turn it on, it heats up right away cools down right away and I can get something like this or a nine by five pan in there and I'm not heating up the entire oven and I'm going to set it for 20 minutes. If it doesn't feel right to me when I touch it, if it doesn't feel like it's cooked well enough, I'll leave it in just a little bit longer. So that's whole grain corn muffins. They're working. I'm going to step away from you a minute before I cold the, um, yes, okay. I'm going to pull you over and we're going to take a look at the, um, the soup. Now some of you would say, Nan, that is finished. That's as good as it needs to be in that. Well, it's not finished. It's not cooked well enough, but you don't have to put anything else in there. Well, I have some additional things I'm going to add. I have zucchini cut in chunks, cauliflower, and red bell pepper. And these are the more tender vegetables. If I cooked them when I began the more fibrous vegetables, the root vegetables, these would have been almost mush. And it's fun to eat this kind of a soup. We're going into spring. March 20th is spring, everyone. We're going into spring, and as the weather warms up, it's kind of nice to have a soup that has a little body to it. And these are summer vegetables. Well, the cauliflower you can get any time. So I'm gonna stir them in. Now I show, I brought this over and we're gonna finish this. Oh, let me back up again, interrupt myself. I'm gonna add the herbs. And so I have oregano and I have thyme and I'm used to low salt in my food. Some of you are completely salt free. A uh, number, actually, if you watch anything that Chef AJ does or Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook, you will see that they are completely salt, oil, and sugar free. And they have been forever and are probably healthier for it. I put a little oil, a uh, little salt in a number of things. And so I think I put a little salt in this. We're going to finish it off with. Uh, ribboned or chopped uh, kale and a little bit of lemon juice. I brought out the asparagus just to say that I could have used asparagus in there. Now maybe I'll throw some bits or some um, broken pieces in at the very end so I can spoon that on top of my soup. That something this delicate just becomes mush in a vegetable soup. If you don't eat it at that time and you eat it afterward, asparagus is such a delicate, beautiful vegetable that I think that you lose some of the value of that. And I'm gonna walk away from you and add just a little more broth because I think I want this a little brothier. And I note that, I think you can hear me. Okay. I note that in the recipe, if you like it, and I don't know that there's a word brothier, <laughs> but if you want it to have a little more broth, and I, I like my soups that way, uh, as opposed to so thick they're like a stew, uh, add a little bit more. So I've just added, what is that, 14 ounces? Well, yeah, this is it's about, it's almost two cups more. Okay, I'm going to bring it to a boil again. And then I'm going to simmer it and we're going to let it go through the rest of class until I show you how pretty it is when it's served. Okay. Now we are going to have a kale salad. We're coming up on St. Patrick's Day, um, March 17th. And that's a fun, especially if you have young ones around, a uh, fun uh, holiday that it sort of ushers in spring because that leprechaun is such an energetic little thing and springtime is such a, a time for growth and energy. So we decided, I decided to make this a, 
um, to honor spring and to honor St. Patty's Day with a couple of clearly green things like a kale salad, bright green kale salad that I've muddied up, you could call it that, with a few other vegetables. But I believe, and it is true, that the more fiber you eat, the healthier you are. And the more variety in that fiber, the healthier you are. That's all been proven by the um, American Gut, um, uh, the American Gut Project, where they studied our microbiome, and that was the conclusion. We all are challenged to get 30 different to eat, 30 different vegetables a month. Not too hard to do. Actually, they prefer it in a week. If you can do it in a month, fine. You can aim for doing it in a week, and that means any kind of plant food because every plant food affects our microbiome, all those good guts and our good bugs in our gut uh, differently. And the the variety is what really makes us healthy. So we have here um, all through the rest of what we're going to eat today: um, fruits and vegetables and whole grains that. Um, I think you're going to appreciate. Oh, I'm going to walk away for a minute because I want to add to the soup. And I'm going to take you with me one more time. All right. I want to add a protein source to the soup. And I love edamame. Edamame is raw soybean. They can be eaten raw, but they're also a very high protein legume. I'm going to add that to the soup, and this is defrosted. And I'm going to do something that makes the soup not free. They weren't terribly expensive, I think $2.50, but they add a certain elegance to it, and that is artichoke hearts. But I'm not going to add them right now. I'm going to add them near the end because they are so delicate. I'll show you. Very pretty little things. They're quartered artichoke hearts. They have a very unique flavor and they're what we call a, they have something called inulin that is um, again a fiber, a natural starch that our bodies love. You can see how pretty this green edamame is going to be. If you don't have edamame, add green peas. Just a pound of green peas to your soup. Okay, and actually you get to add anything you want to the soup. That's what's fun about this. Okay, let's get the salad dressing made for this celebration of St. Patty's soup or salad. You're making a salad dressing without any oil. All of my salad dressings have no oil. Um, I don't even know if I finish my conversation about why I don't add oils because the oils are heavy in the omega-6s and we are trying to get a balance between threes, omega-3s and omega-6s. And one way to do that is to eat more omega-3 foods and less omega-6s and that includes the oils. So, I am going to make my salads all without oil. So I just picked up an orange to show you that I had a nice size orange here, but I just started with a knife, went all the way around it, and I now have a peeled orange that doesn't have very much of the white membrane on it. It's seedless. It's a, it's a navel orange, and I'm putting it in my food processor. I happen to have this little food processor, a little Cuisinart that I just love. All right. Then I'm adding tahini. Tahini is soy sauce, but without gluten. So it could be gluten. It could be um, soy sauce. It could be tahini. It could be um, aminos, the coconut aminos uh, that taste a lot like uh, soy sauce that give you that umami. I'm putting in a couple of dates. And when you use dates 
and it calls for pitted dates, even if the container, like this one, says pitted medule dates, which this did, I still will take the time to break them, to break them up. See now, for one thing, this one has the stem on it, and the stem is tough. It'll never break down. So get the stem off, and it's not a bad idea to break them in half because this is done by machine, and the machines sometimes miss the pits. And if there's a pit in your date, you could end up ruining your um, blender or food processor, which would really be a shame. So I have um, grated ginger, grated fresh ginger. I have something called miso. And miso is soybean that has been ground and fermented. When I buy soy, I always aim for organic um, because that just happens to be a heavily sprayed crop. But um, whether it's organic or not, if it means, oh gosh, do I buy it if it's not organic, it's the only way I can find it, um, just buy it. And soy is very good for us. Apple cider vinegar, I just added. And let me show you what these things look like. I used tahini, which is ground sesame seed. I used tamari, which is Japanese soy sauce without, um, without gluten. This is the way you buy miso. And this is where you're going to say, Nan, I'm not going to buy well, how many ounces is this? 14 ounces of something that I'm only using a couple of teaspoons for. Well, you can, this will last me probably a half a year. I've got to turn down the soup. And because I use just a teaspoon or a tablespoon at a time, I make my own miso soup, put in shaved bits of uh, green onion and little bits of um, cubed tofu and shredded sheets of nori when you buy the little seaweed patch, put that in. And it's just a delicious beverage uh, that actually, again, feeds our microbiome. It's a whole food and our gut really likes it. So I use miso um, from time to time and I actually quite frankly use it a lot, uh, but just little bits of it. And then I add a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of cayenne pepper to add just a tiny bit of heat to it. And with the cayenne, it would be just a quick shake. All right. There. This, and I remember the last time I made it, I wanted it a little bit more liquid. I'm going to add just a touch of water. And you can actually make it and see if you want it any more liquid. Sorry about the sound. I'm just breaking down that one. See the muffins, they're standing up high above the, um, above the muffin head. So we're going to put them in a serving bowl or put the dressing in a serving bowl because, well, hold on. I was going to say, I like to drizzle it over the salad, but actually, I'm going to do something different tonight. All right. Oh, that is so pretty, and it smells so good. What have I done? A, a whole orange? 
some seasonings, the miso, the tamari, which is almost an Asian flavor, but not quite that little bit of ginger in it, as well as um, a whole orange. And this is what we're going to do with it. We're gonna toss it now with the salad to soften the kale before we serve it. Let the kale sort of marinate in it. And then I could add a little bit more later. The recipe calls for shaved kale, and I simply buy it by the bag, organic uh, shredded kale. It's a couple of dollars for a huge bag at the market. I get mine at Trader Joe's, but you can get it anywhere. I know I could have left this even more green, but I couldn't help myself. I had to add to it the carrots, even though the recipe calls for carrots and cabbage, I added a little bit extra carrots and cabbage because our body loves the vitamin A and the carrots and the anthocyanins, which is what makes blueberries so special, what makes red cabbage special as well, and purple sweet potatoes as well. So any chance I get, I love to go for that. And we'll take our um, salad dressing. And pour it over. Look really pretty. Not all of it. I'll add more later when I decide how much I want. But I didn't add, as the recipe called for, the thin slices of red bell pepper. I'm going to add that just before I serve it. And this isn't the entire recipe, meaning that the, the uh, or the quantity it called for in terms of salad because I wasn't going to eat that much. This is about, oh gosh, probably three cups of cabbage rather than six. So we're going to let this marinate a little and what's going to happen is the kale will soften. Then I'll plate it, put on some garnish and just sprinkle on a little bit more. So I'll get this back out again a little bit more of the dressing. And I'll put the dressing in here, put a serving spoon. This looks so pretty because it has bits of um, date in it. Just little bits, discernible bits of brown along with the red, or the orange rather, of the orange. Okay, all right. So I'll put the spoon out, get it ready for serving a little bit later. And this is going to go back in the refrigerator and just sit. And then we're gonna do dessert. And dessert is really a healthy snack you can have any time. Let me put this in the refrigerator. Okay, and now we're going to shift gears from the small cuisinart to the large one. So what have we made? You have a soup going, we have our muffins almost ready. We have a ginger dressing that you can use on an arugula salad. I made a arugula, um, red cabbage, and um, baby spring green mixture and put strawberries over it and then use this dressing because it's kind of a slightly sweet dressing. It was so good. Uh, consider this a dressing that you can use for any summer salad. And the summer salads tend to be the ones that have some fruit on them. So what we're adding now and the amount of water I added to that to give it that texture, which I do prefer, and it will thicken up a little in the refrigerator was probably a tablespoon. Okay. Now we're going to make the luck of the Irish minty bliss balls. This is fun. And we'll get this ready to serve in just a bit. So I'm starting with three ingredients 
that are the basis of this recipe. And that is uh, walnuts, again, the highest nut and omega-3s, lots of fiber, lots of healthy fats. Uh, dates, that is a whole fruit. Now, no, you don't eat a lot of dried fruit because dried fruit is such a concentrated source of sugar. But these date balls, you'll make them small. They're, you find these in all the stores. You'll find package, they call them um, uh, energy nuggets, they call them, uh, they'll do them with fig, they'll do them with date, they'll do them with apricot, um, but they're energy balls. Well, in this case, we are calling them uh, luck of the Irish uh, uh, bliss balls because we're going to roll them in a mixture that's going to make them a little bit green and celebrate St. Patty's Day in that way. And then we're also adding coconut. Coconut all also is a uh, whole food. Now, I don't use coconut all the time. I don't use it that often because coconut has uh, is high in fat, which is fine. It's a it's a whole food fat, but it is more saturated than any other of the um, plant food fats. But again, it's still a great way to get a dessert that's going to nourish you and that's something that you can keep on hand for um, you know, for dessert but also for a, um, a snack that you can keep in the refrigerator or freezer. When you buy the walnuts, don't buy halves, uh, half walnuts because they're more expensive that way. Just buy the baking pieces. I get these again at Trader Joe's. I happen to have one within four minutes of me and it's just an easy store to go to and their prices are great. And um, when you get the, the pieces, you can get a pound for $4 instead of a pound for $6 or $7. And then we're going to add just a little bit extra flavor to the Bliss Balls by using uh, vanilla extract and a touch of mint. And that's why these are St. Patty's Day or St. Patrick's Minty Bliss Balls. Okay, so let's take it away. And if you have kids in the family, they'll enjoy rolling these. We're going to start with the walnuts, the dates. Wait a minute, let me get a more firm spatula. These spatulas I'm using, these red spatulas, are from a a company called Tivoli or Tavolo. It's either T E V or T O V O L A, Tavola. Uh, and I got them, I saw them spoken of on a cooking show. Um, Ann Esselstyn, who is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's wife, who is in her mid to late 80s and is still doing cooking shows like a 30 year old. She is so energetic. She talked about these while she was using them, and she said, I love them, and I agree. They're silicone, they're firm, but the edges are pliable. So I can get in there and clean out a bowl, but by the same token, it's firm enough for me to dig out these uh, pieces of date. And we're going to add the coconut. This was a half a cup of coconut. And I'm adding uh, vanilla extract with just a little touch. It says a dash of uh, mint extract. Now this is pricey. I got a organic and maybe that was the difference. I don't know. Peppermint extract and I think this bottle was eight dollars. It was I thought really? It'll last forever because quite frankly it is so strong and that was my mistake the first time I used it. I think I honored a recipe without thinking twice that called for a, a teaspoon of it. It was so minty, it was almost um, overpowering. This called for a dash and that's all I used was a dash. So what is this about? I'll tell you what this is in a minute. Oh, I so you can't see the bottles. There we go. That's the extract, vanilla and mint. And because the dates are moist, I'm not adding any, um, any bed or fluid to this. I'm used to doing this the other way around. Hold on. I think 
think I did this last time as well. Come oh, on. I wonder why I'm having this trouble. Hold on. There, it wasn't on. It was not seated. There, okay. And now again, sorry for the sound. Oh, the muffins are done. Yep, they look fabulous. So I'm going to put them on a rack. They're forward, and I'll show you them in just a little bit. Um, take a look. Where are you? Oh, here. There we go. I'm going to flip one of these things out, darn it. If I'm not careful, I need to turn you a little bit more. There you go. All right. So that's taken care of. Soup's looking good. All right. are rendering some of the moisture and it's going to become more sort of pasty. So that I can blend them into balls better. Yes, okay. Let me see. I may have to, the first time I made, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. So, I'm just going to show you a couple of them. There's no need for me to try to make the entire recipe. Um, this is really stuck in tight today. I'm not sure why. Okay. So what's going to happen is... I think I'll use a small one. I'm going to take a spoon and I can take the blade out of here. Take a spoon, a, I'll call it small fistful, and these become, and I'm squeezing them together, and there's lots of, oh, let's see. Hmm. There we go. All right. Okay. And Jackie, do you want to wash your hands and make some bliss balls? I'll introduce you to Jackie. She is my husband's youngest daughter. One is 29. Not yet. Okay. Almost. All right. Oh, yeah. May. Four? 19. <laughs> Christine is 29 and Jackie is 27 right now. Right, Jackie? 28. 28. Long again. Turns 29 a month after Christine. In other words, they were 13 months apart. And now I have two daughters. Isn't that fun? All right. So just a handful of this. Just take a handful, make a fist out of it. We'll make just a couple more. And while she's doing that, I'm going to check on the soup. And it'll give me a chance to get your meal together. And this is what you're doing. You're just using your hands. Now, while she's doing that, she's going to make maybe three or four more. And we'll do the rest of them later. I'm going to show you what I did to make them easier to deal with. Because otherwise... They are too, um, uh, they're too sort of sticky. I ground in the food processor. 
here and here, and then I'll work that far enough. Good. Okay. Um, I ground some green. If you get, oh, there I am. Okay. If you get um, pumpkin seeds, raw pumpkin seeds, they're green. So I ground raw pumpkin seeds. And I thought, okay, I'll roll them in raw pumpkin seeds. Otherwise, it could have been, or, or pistachios. Otherwise, it, it, I could have used any nut um, during the rest of the year when I'm not looking for green for St. Patrick's Day. I might use um, just walnut, more walnut or um, any nut. It could have been almond. But it wasn't green enough. So I got out. Can I see that? Yes. <laughs> I love to have a cup of matcha from time to time, and matcha has a, you you do too. I love it. Okay, um, and it's it's a it's lower caffeine than coffee. It's a tea, and so it's full of antioxidants. And I opened this package of matcha, one of the packages, and I added that to the ground. Not the whole package, just a little bit of it, actually. This is so green. It's such a green green that it turned these ground pumpkin seeds into green green. <laughs> and then when I roll it, I'm just rolling its bottom and leaving the very top on natural. But look at this. Do you see this? Green bliss balls. Isn't that cute? And when you look at your recipe... Um, online if you look at the picture it looks just like this and it's actually lovely it's an interesting uh, flavor tone to have that tiny bit of matcha in there and again it's very little now if you have little kids yeah you may want to leave the matcha out I don't know that I want to give any amount of caffeine to little kids <laughs> okay so I'm going to put these on a plate, and these will be our dessert tonight. But when you look at what's in them, do you agree that this is what many of the high protein, I'll call them bars, or energy nuggets have in them? They are fruit, dates, uh, coconut, which gives you additional fat, and... Um, the dates eliminate them having to have sugar in them, whereas a lot of these these bars have sugar added to that in, in all kinds of uh, ways. But there you go. Now, I wanted to show you what they look like inside. I made these to experiment with them. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time aiming this thing well. Okay. And so I made them in advance, and they refrigerate beautifully. They freeze beautifully. But when you cut them in half, take a look. See? Doesn't that look yummy? You're looking at coconut and nuts and date, and they're fabulous. So I'm going to put our bliss balls. Look at Doesn't that look nice? Right here, because that will be dessert tonight. Are you gonna? You want to? Are you on a roll? I was gonna say I might as well just keep going. Go for okay, it. Okay. What else we're we gonna do? <laughs> Good point. All right, and we'll work on that later. In the meantime, I'm gonna put our meal together. And here are our. I'm gonna. You're gonna move out of the way. I, I, well, actually, I'm gonna move you right here. So you're fine. You're fine right there. Jackie is a computer engineer. She is, she works for the railroad, and um, she actually uh, controls the software and makes some software for the gates that go up and down on the road, road crossings. Am I saying that right, Jackie? You are. Since I blew your age, <laughs> no, I like it's something no, right. That's definitely correct. I'm in signals and systems. There you go. And she just got a new certification, so she's rocking it. All right, did you see that I didn't use any oil on the silicone? And look, isn't that nice? Can you see the steam coming out of this? Oh, people, yum, yum. All right, I already had a couple of them made. These were 
in the refrigerator. I'm going to add a couple of the hot ones to it. Because when we have our soup today, see the soup is rather light. If you think about it, it's a lot of veg, a lot of broth. We have some protein from the edamame. All vegetables have protein. Uh, there's protein in potato, protein in broccoli, for example. There's no broccoli in there. It's 30% protein by, by um, calorie weight. Um, so we have a full range of nutrition in there. We have protein in here from the flaxseed and the oat and the corn. And we have kale, which also has protein and has calcium. Look at I can show it to you. Doesn't that look great? I'm going to let them cool on the rack. And I'm going to pour some soup and show you our meal, what it's going to look like when we're about to serve it. Thanks, Jackie. You're welcome. So I'm going to have a recipe to share with you from what Jackie brought over today. She called and she said, oh, I just made something, vegetable ceviche. So she came over and she had lunch with us and we had her vegetable ceviche. <gasps> Amazing, made out of palm hearts. So it was so good that I knew that we were going to end up sharing it. Um, on one of the cooking shows, so you'll be having it. All right, so we have the salad, and to plate it, we want a big bunch of this. Jackie and I are going to share this entire salad mm -hmm. for dinner tonight, and we'll plate it with this, and you can see why, maybe, I wanted to save some of the red for top on the top. I didn't want it all mixed in because I think it looks prettier this way. And then I have some pumpkin seed, raw sprouted pumpkin seed. Again, more protein. And pumpkin seeds have some, some um, unique nutritional value that other seeds don't. Every, every seed, every nut, every fruit, every vegetable has a different effect on our body uh, in subtle ways. Look at this beautiful salad. Isn't that nice? So we have our salad. We have our muffin. Uh, where's there? <laughs> and I'm going to pour some soup and we'll take a look at that. I'm going to bring you over and show you what our soup looks like and how I'm going to finish it. So to finish it properly, I'm going to add a couple of cups of that same shredded kale, and it will cook down in minutes. And you see how beautiful this is? You know what I forgot to put in? It's not a do or die, but I grow my own bay leaves. It's the, the I've said this before on um, the videos. It's a shrub that you can get, but it will become a tree, a huge tree. The genus is, is um, Laurus, L-E-U-R-U-S, and the species is Nobilis, noble size, etc. It's a Laurus nobilis. But if you buy it as a shrub, get a one gallon shrub somewhere, put it in a pot or put it in the ground, you will always have bay laurel. In other words, bay leaves and it's fresh. I'm going to throw this in even though it's too late for tonight. <laughs> but this thing has to cool and it will still infuse it with flavor. I'm going to put one more in. These are small. And the bay leaves do give an additional dimension to a soup. You just don't eat it after it's, or don't eat the, the bay leaves, um, but they're easy to see. They don't break down, and so they're easy to see, and, and you can remove them. And then to almost every, well, vegetable dish, I finish with either, with some kind of an acid um, to balance the flavors, with either lemon juice, uh, balsamic vinegar, or um, even maybe a tiny bit of uh, red wine vinegar, sometimes apple cider vinegar, but not too often. Um, and so I have one of my um, Meyer lemons, which is a, it's a 
basically a hybrid of orange and lemon. And I'm squeezing that in to give the soup just a pop. And let's serve it. Doesn't this look beautiful? And again, it's great tonight. We have potato and squash and edamame and zucchini and carrot and celery. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, where are we? There we go. Very pretty. So let me show you our meal. And this time I am going to angle you down. There. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed. Let me grab the spoon. I hope you've enjoyed our class tonight. And I hope you see that whether you make the entire meal and you can make it at different times or you make just parts of it, this is something that you can use to celebrate the green for St. Patty's Day, but more importantly, celebrate your own health. And because the soup is delicious, even better the next day, and it's even better if you freeze it and you're able to go to your freezer and pull out of your own freezer library and pull out, I'm gonna pull you back up again and pull out a meal as easily as defrosting a container of soup, pulling out a couple of frozen muffins, uh, your salad dressing is pre-made, and I like the idea of just putting a little bit more as a dribble on the top, because I didn't dress it that much. And again, what a pretty salad. And, not a drop of oil. Do any of you have any questions? How are we doing with time? We're perfect. Anybody have any So Kim had a question. Um, she wanted to know what did you put in the pot before the onions? Nothing. And that was why I mentioned most people would think I had oil in the pot. There wasn't a drop of oil in it. The pot was hot. Start with a medium hot pan closer to medium than hot hot put the onions in as soon as they hit the pan they start weeping and i watch for it to get a little bit brown then i add more broth to bubble it up again deglaze the pan do that a second time and i sort of caramelize those onions and uh, so nothing anybody else no no one else has any questions we just had um a guest 291 mentioned that she does her own applesauce by cooking two apples in some water on the stove until tender and then pubbing in blender. And it works perfect. perfect she said. Very nice. And what is your favorite apple for that 291? Mm -hmm. The chance? Yeah. Not yet, but let's see. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to break one of the muffins open and I'll, I'll use one of the cooler ones because it'll break more easily and show you how pretty these look inside. You can see the bits of corn in them. Doesn't that look great? And they're hard to stop at just one. When you're eating soup and in order to really fill up, you want a starch to go along with that. Um, the muffins are a great starch to go along with it. Even though you've got the potato in there and the edamame, um, it's really handy to have an additional, um, I'll call it, um, highly satisfying uh, side dish like the muffins and, oh, look at the balls, and then we'll roll them a little bit later. They could be left this way, or you could roll them um, up to you. 1591 said any kind of apple. She likes gala apple. Oh, okay, all right, excellent. And well, then thank you for sharing that, yes. We had another guest. She wanted to know, uh, do you caramelize the onions first before you add the potatoes, etc.? cetera? Yeah. yeah. I began with a big chopped onion. I 
lightly browned it the way you would normally with onion, added some garlic to it, added some more broth, and every time I added the broth, it got a little more brown because the it deglazed the pan. I never let the pan get dark, uh, just slightly brown as the onion stuck a little bit and then added the additional broth. And then I added to that the celery and the carrot, mixed those together, and then I added the broth, the tomatoes, the aquafaba, and the um, potato, and the starchy vegetables, the butternut squash, potato, and um, the carrots. and Well, the carrots and celery and the onion. That cooked first before I added the uh, more tender vegetables. And you'll find this recipe on your recipe sheet, the one that gave, that's at the bottom of the email that uh, introduces you or reminds you uh, to come to the class. And there's a recipe sheet as well as photos of what I've just made. And if you can't get a hold of any of that, just go to my website, nansimmonson.com, and you'll find the almost free soup there. You'll find the muffins there. And I believe the kale salad is there as well. So you can get those all individually. Oh, and I know the bliss balls are there. And the bliss balls are lovely with a cup of tea. Oh my gosh, they smell good. Anyway. Everyone wants to thank you. That looks yummy. And um, the recipes, uh, that everything looks really good. Thank you, Nancy. Good. good. And thank you, Marissa. Thank you for being here tonight. And thank you all for joining me. Have a great evening. Um, Enjoy the evening, enjoy St. Patty's Day, enjoy spring on March 20th. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Marissa, do I have to turn it off or do you? There we go.